Hey everybody, Eddie J on Crypto. I hope you're having a great day. So there are a few things that we want to talk about today. Um, I'm taking a little bit of a broader view on what's going on around the world and then kind of bringing that back to how that might affect crypto either today or in the future. First one up, Canada, Singapore, and Japan um, have some local regulations that are going to force Coinbase to require additional information for transactions over certain amounts. Um, that's going to be interesting how that plays out. Right now, Coinbase is catching a lot of flack for that. Um, something else that we're going to dive into, there are a lot of counterfeit apps that are out there with regard to crypto. They masquerade as popular apps like MetaMask, Trust Wallet, Coinbase. Um, we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about how ESET has discovered a $2.3 million or $2.7 million scam or something like that. No, I'm getting my wires mixed up. It's a scam against Chinese. That's my dog. It's a scam against Chinese uh, users. Um, and that's targeting a lot more than $2.3, $2.7 million. The next story is Thomas, I think, I think it's pronounced Spiker or Speaker, um, has been charged with a $2.7 million Bitcoin laundering scandal um, or scheme. That is a big deal. We'll get to that because I actually want to dig into that. Russian Prime Minister uh, Mishustin, I'm hoping I got that right. Um, he's calling for crypto to be integrated into Russia's economy. My thought on that real quick, and we'll get into it a little bit more a little bit later, is that would make it a little bit harder for people to, you know, have sanctions against oligarchs or wallets that they control or anything else like that, because there'd be so many people involved. But that's just my own take on it. But I think that's I think it's still a big deal even without that. Last but not least, um, Christopher Waller is a U.S. Federal Reserve governor, and he's not big on crypto like at all with regard to CBDCs, you know, central bank digital currencies. Um, he feels that if the idea is to make transactions faster, there are already platforms out there that do that. And I think he's kind of missing the point of the control of those transactions, the costs of those transactions and otherwise. So we'll get into all of that in a second. All right. So last week I told you about how Binance is getting out of Canada or getting out of portions of Canada with regard to what, excuse me, what their operations are. You know what? I make clear my throat. Here's to you. Happy Saturday. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Um, if you're in Singapore, Japan, or Canada, your transactions over a certain amount of money are going to require additional information like the wallet that it's going to and more information about the person receiving those funds. Now, I can kind of understand that, you know, anti-money money laundering laws, anti-terrorism, anti-terrorism financing laws, regulations, things like that. I seem to think that it's more of a crackdown. Now, when, when Binance started, you know, making transitions to get out of Canada, I was wondering, yeah, but Coinbase is still there. Other companies are still there. I wonder what the reaction is going to be. Well, here's the first wave. So now I'm wondering, are these countries thinking right? Right. Um, the more trend, the more you push on centralized exchanges to do certain things, don't you think that's going to push people more toward decentralized exchanges where you're not going to be able to force those things? The most you'd be able to do is to block the app's operation within the country. And that might not go over too well. And it could be a little prove to be a little impossible. So I'm just, I, did, I told you I was going to keep a watch on this and I, I keep seeing things like this, you know, kind of heavy handed approaches to things. 
I'm all for AML or anti-money laundering re regulation. I'm all for anti-terrorism financing or ATF um, regulation, but it's how it's done, right? It, that, that's what I'm looking for is the how. And it's not an easy question. I mean, you can get mad at Coinbase for implementing. You can get mad at the various, um, so I told you Stitch was gonna stop by every now and then, and that's Stitch. There you go, boy. So, but the fact is, is that it's really, it's a really difficult subject and it's really tough to stop that. So how do you go about doing that? And I don't know how, I don't, I don't know the answer to that, right? I really don't know the answer. And I think that countries are struggling to figure out what the answer should be. So I think that as a public, we kind of need to start thinking about how, what those things are supposed to be in place for. Anti-money laundering, okay, drug dealers, gun trafficking, just illegal, you know, nefarious business. Anti-terrorism terrorism financing, that's a, that's a straight up clear, you know, thing, right? How do we figure that out? That's my question. And I don't have a clear answer. And there are way far more smarter people than I am trying to figure that out. So as you're looking at this stuff, just keep these things in mind. Um, moving on, you have um, counterfeit apps. Again, a big problem in this space. And how do you stop these counterfeit apps? That means you're going to have to do your own research. You're going to have to know where those apps are coming from, you know, who's behind those apps, and make sure that those apps are coming from reputable businesses. Now, a, a scheme against Chinese users was uncovered by ESET. They are a Slovak cybersecurity firm, and they found, you know, these apps going on, you know, deeply in, in China. Well, guess what? China's not the only place where this is happening. If you use uh, you know, social social networking and social, you know, social media platforms, you see a ton of impersonating, you know, accounts. That's just a fact. How do you stop that? And how do you figure out which ones are real? That's the tough part. And it's none of it is easy, right? So know where, you know, these apps are coming from. If you're going to an app store, yeah, they're in the app stores too. So don't just think that, oh, well, it's in the Apple app store. It's in the Apple, it's in the Android app store or whatever app store. I trust that app store. No, do research on the app. So a lot of these sites, they say, oh, hey, we have an app. Great. You can click the link on their site to pop up the, pop up the app. Just make sure that you're going to the right site. You're talking about very sophisticated apps that are out there that are meant to impersonate real ones. And what they're doing is they're, they're snatching your, you know, your seeds, you know, the seed information for actually getting into your wallet there. That's what they're snatching. And it's not just for crypto. It's for everything that you do on a computer that's, you know, accessing data or anything across the internet. Be mindful of where you're getting these things. Be mindful of all of that. If you have apps running on your phone and you don't know what the heck they do, you don't know what they're talking to, you know, one of the old things that I talk about is don't use an app like a calculator that's going out to the internet for more information. Should run locally and shouldn't have to collect any information whatsoever, right? It's a freaking calculator. It's as simple as that. Be mindful of what's on your phone. And if there's something on your phone that doesn't need to be there, remove it. Don't just leave it on one of the back pages that you never use. No, physically go there, remove the app. Okay, that's how that works. Just remove the app. There was a, I'm looking for Stitcher, there it is. Because he still wants to play catch. He still wants to play fetch. There you go. Thomas Speaker, a former party producer in New York has been accused of laundering $2.3 million or 2.7, somewhere within that range. That's a lot of money. Plus, he's been accused of flipping crypto to cash to the tune of about $380,000. 
because the two point something is taking in the cash, flipping it to crypto. And now he's being charged with flipping it to the other side. Think about that. He's been accused of having clients that steal identities and deal drugs. That's a lot to go on. And the reason why I'm bringing this to you is because, you know, there's this hype about, you know, using crypto, you won't get caught and all that good stuff. That's not what it's all about. That's not really what it's meant to do. It can be used for something like that. I'd advise you not to. I really would. I really would. There are ways to get around things. There's always a way to get around something, but there's always a way to get caught too. And that's all you need is one little mistake and you can get caught. So think about what's going on. And I, and I bring this to you because there are so many things that can affect the crypto space. So when, so that crypto that was seized, when does that crypto come back online? Is it enough to affect a crypto space? Maybe, maybe not. Depends. Does it get burned? Does it stay with the government? Maybe, maybe not. No idea. Right? The question I have about this particular case is, well, those are your clients. What other clients do you have? So that means he's probably going to wind up flipping on clients and they're all scrambling. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on right now. A whole bunch of stuff. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I was telling you about how $4.6 billion was, was trying to be laundered or people were trying to launder that. You can get caught. You can get caught. And it doesn't matter how long because that scheme, the four point, you know, the four plus billion dollar scheme that happened a long time ago. That was a hack that happened a long time ago, a few years ago. And here you are a few years later getting caught. Like I said, you can get caught. Keep your stuff on the up and up, which most of us do, right? There are those bad nefarious people that are not doing that. Be mindful of who you're getting crypto from, who you're sending crypto to, why and how. Be mindful. Do your own research. Be mindful. Now, Russian prime minister, and the reason why I bring this up is because you're talking about a whole country that could be engulfed in crypto or be, you know, adopting crypto into their, you know, into their economy. Um, their central bank doesn't want to, Russia, but their prime minister and, you know, that's not really who we're talking about, right? It's Putin that really wants this. Um, that's because the ruble is crashing. Remember a few weeks ago, I was telling you about how, com how countries are embracing crypto because they have a bad fiat. Well, guess what? Ruble right now is trash. The ru ruble right now is trash around the world. So move to crypto, right? To hopefully save your economy and all that good stuff. Well, that would make it hard for you to sanction oligarchs because they can mask their money using tons of accounts. Guess what? There were over 30,000 accounts or something like that. I reported on that like two or three weeks ago that were identified. Um, I think it was, it might've been Coinbase, but it, it, they were identified addresses that were identified as being controlled by nefarious characters, mil worth millions of dollars. So imagine if a whole country gets involved in crypto because it's a part of the part of the economy and what impact that could have on the crypto space. I can easily see how crypto prices would go up because of, excuse me, that built in demand. So that's something I'm also looking at how difficult it would be to track, you know, various, you know, things that happen with regard to crypto within that country and outside of that country going in and out. It's going to be difficult. It would definitely be difficult. But what does that mean? Get involved in the economy. Does that mean that, you know, banks around the country would be able to, you know, flip fiat to crypto, crypto to fiat? see how that plays out. There's still a lot more that has to happen, but I still want to see how that plays out. You have Christopher Waller, who is one of the Federal, Federal Reserve governors in the United States, saying that he doesn't believe, you know, in crypto as a as legal tender. He believes that it's more like electronic gold, right? That it, it can hold value and worth and be used in that way. He also doesn't really have any um, high hopes for CBDCs, because if the idea is to have faster transactions, well, there are already platforms out there, financial platforms out there that do that. Yeah, sort of, but he's kind of missing the point, right? What's the idea behind crypto? 
idea behind crypto is I don't have to pay some bank some stupid freaking fees, you know, hidden fees, all that crap for simply holding my money. I can grab a device, I can grab a phone, I can grab a, a browser and hold, I can grab a piece of hardware and hold my own money. After all, they're not really paying you anything, right? You're not getting any real substantial, you know, interest rates. You used to way back in the day, not anymore. You're getting hit with fees every month. They're charging you to hold your money so that they can make money on your money and then give you nothing in return. There are some people out there that don't have bank accounts. I told you a story yesterday about how, you know, there's a country out there that's saying, well, you know, or, or a city, uh, what, who was it, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, is going to start, you know, enabling people to pay taxes and bills to the municipality via crypto, via PayPal, but via PayPal crypto, right? And so when you look at that, it's, how can I get more people involved? Because a lot of people are kind of like, why would I want to put my money in the bank? My son is like that. Why do I want to put my money? He, ke he keeps as little money in a freaking bank as possible. Just like me, as little money as possible. Why? Because I'm not getting anything out of that money. So you hold your money in other ways. You don't have to have cash in the bank to be liquid. That's my point. Now you carry a risk that crypto value can go down, but you also carry the upside that crypto value can go up. So you pay attention to what those things are. DCA, dollar cost averaging on the way down, even on the way up, buying in or on regular intervals, specific amounts and regular intervals, just like kind of how you do a mutual fund. Same thing, same kind of concept. But I say all of this to you to kind of get you into the mindset of what kind of research you should be doing to track you know, a given crypto, to track a crypto space, so that you can see macro events coming or get better at identifying macro events that could be coming as well as identifying micro events of things that are affecting the crypto space. So you can make better judgment calls on your finances. Something that, you know, I don't think banks do a good job. I don't think they do a good job at educating the public. I think that we need to have, you know, investment classes in schools from a young age. I told you how my eight-year-old niece, I think she's nine now, she's gonna kill me for not knowing her age, but she knows how to buy stocks. My brother's teaching her how to invest. Invest, imagine if I'd have gotten that information when I was her age. How about you, when you got, if you'd have had that information at your fingertips at that age, where would you be now? You know, compound, compound, compound. That's the only thing I remember. So do your own research across any investment, real estate, crypto, uh, mutual funds, stocks, bonds, options. Do your own research. You can always listen to people and get information from people, but get good at gathering your own information, aggregating that information about a specific subject, and then turning that information into knowledge so that you can use it. Anyway, let's get into the numbers because today is pretty interesting in my, in my opinion. Um, every day is interesting, right? So let's look at the winners and losers. Clearly today you have more winners than losers. We're still kind of on an uptick. But let's go look at the, at the losers to see who's here that could be interesting. And as I look down, Chili's is down 2%. Again, anything below anything below five percent, I don't care. It's it's a non-mover. So to me, you're basically zero. But it tells me who's on the low end and who's on the high end, right? So let's skip over here and see who's on the higher end. Wow, that's a lot. Don't know who that company is, but oof, that's that's a big move. Um, what's the market cap? One point two billion. Wow. Okay. It says that number, but I don't think it's that number. Right. That's because this this. Yeah. No. One point two billion is correct. Um, so that's interesting. That's something that I would something like that sticks out and you might want to pay attention to that. You saw this V chain. Weren't they down yesterday? And now they're up fifteen point seven one percent. I think they took a little dip yesterday and, and bounced up today. But look at that number. This is off their high. This all time high change is off their all time high. And these are the percentages that they're off. 
Now you know why I keep saying we're in a discounted zone right now. So yes, cryptos were really low before, but we're still in a zone where you can still catch things on sale. Right now, everything's still on sale. Everything. I mean, VeChain is a really good project. They're up 15.8% in the past 24 hours. Again, that's, that's what these charts are showing you, the past 24 hours. It's a rolling 24 hours, right? So if it's 7.52 right now, Eastern Standard Time, 24 hours ago at 7.52, it was 15% lower. That's what these numbers are showing you in this chart. That's why I have this chart, so I can see things, right? So I'm just looking at that and I'm going, wow, that's that's a big move for VeChain. That's that's a money move. Um, who else is on here that you know makes me take a look? ApeCoin at $13, up 11.52%. Wow. Wow. Anchor making moves at 8.3 um, or 8.03%. Um, is there anybody else that I'm looking at? You saw it just flip. Is there anything, anybody else that I'm looking at? Pocket Network had some news on that the other day, 6.15%. Again, all of this is happening within a span of 24 hours. So 24 hours ago, you'd have been sitting on some, you'd have been buying something at one point, And then 24 hours later, you're at another point. This is why I have that chart, because I can see who's moving from this side to that side. Look at Axie Infinity. They were up before. Now they're down 7%. So they were up, and now they're down. Is that a buying opportunity? It's Axie Infinity. I would say yes. I would absolutely say yes. Because before, by the end of, by mid next week, I believe Axie Infinity will flip and be on this side. You just have to watch how far down it's going to go. To me, like I said, everything is on a, at a discount right now. It really is. Axie Infinity is 60% off its all-time high. Again, this is why I have that chart. It's, yes, I know. I promise you we're going to have a website. We are having a website. It's probably going to be called Grow My Bag because I'm trying to grow my bag. Um, and we'll have different, but we're most likely going to have different people, you know, share content, share their views and perspectives on how to grow, how they're growing their bag, because that's what it's all about, right? It's about a bunch of people, starting with me, sharing our journey about how we're growing our bags, right? So let's take a look at what else is going on on the internet. So we're starting off with a broad view. Bitcoin at 44,000, wow, it's still staying there. That means we're, we're still bouncing within a, within a range, but we stair-stepped up and started bouncing within a new range. That's pretty cool. That really is pretty cool. Look at, have you, are, are you looking at Ethereum? They were at 2,700 last week, at 3,100 now. That's a nice percentage. That really is a nice percentage. Solana was down below 100, now it's above 100. Big move. Avalanche, I think has, Avalanche has been in the news a lot. I think they have a lot to, a lot to do. They're gonna make some moves. I think there are a lot of companies that are gonna make some moves. So. Pay attention to what's going on, do your own research, compare notes, understand the rhythms of whatever project that you're looking at and see how that works out for you. But again, just be aware of what you're doing, how you're doing it. Learn, always be open to learning. I learn every day. That's why I do this stuff because I'm sharing with you, but as I'm sharing with you, I'm learning about all this stuff. Let's take a look at the fear and greed index. I haven't updated this in a minute. Did I just see a 51? Holy shamoligans. I do see a 51. That's getting really close to greed. <laughs> so like I was telling you before, if you look at this screen, you can see where you had pockets of pent-up energy and the things going up. Pockets of pent-up energy, you know, going sideways over here, but po that pent-up energy and then going up. That was a super, super move going up. Now you've got the same thing where you've got pockets of you know, positive energy that are building up, getting ready to explode. So pay attention. So do me a favor. It's Eddie J on crypto. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. It tells me that I'm doing something right and I'm being helpful to you. It really helps because I know I'm being helpful to my kids and I want to keep showing them. And this that, that positive energy drives me forward and be greatly appreciated. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you know when I'm dropping another video about how I'm going to grow my bag. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye.